And so it's so important. That, that decision that you make then is an eternal one, not one for uh, today, not one for this week or this year even, but for eternity. Then you know that decision will decide where you go, spend eternity, whether it be heaven or whether it be hell. And like I like to say jokingly, be smoking or not smoking. That's your decision, not mine. I wish it was. I wish I could just say, you're all going to be saved. Boop, you're all saved. But it's not. It's too important a decision like that, and you have to make it yourself. Well, okay, number one here, it says, free from the bondage of sin. And this is in, found in 833. All right, let me find it here, 833. And it says, they answered him, and he said, his Abraham's descendants had never been in bondage to anyone. They couldn't understand it. They said, you know, even today when you say, you know, I know somebody that can set you free. I know somebody that can save you. Save me from what? Save me from what? I don't understand what you're talking about. I'm not drowning. But they don't realize that, yeah, you are. You're drowning in sin. Because, you know, we're all sinners. That's the first thing you have to admit. We are all sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's God's word saying that. You must remember that. That's the first thing that you have to decide. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. And it says here, how can you say you be, uh, will be made free? How can you say that? And you've been in bondage. You know, how can you make me free? I'm free. I'm free. I can do what I want. You know, it's that freedom that we do enjoy can be destructive as well because we don't realize where we're going to go when we pass through this life. When we go into close your eyes, not to wake up anymore in this world. But I want to, when I close my eyes in death, I want to open them to see the face of Jesus. That's, that's my goal. And you know what? My Bible says that that's exactly what's going to happen when I close my eyes in death. You know, I just turned 79 years old. They say, some people say, you're in the fall time of your life. And I said, no, 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 I'm a full-blown winner. You know, <laughs> 79 years old, I ain't even looking forward to spring anymore. You know, if I make it through the winter time, I'm just going to be happy. You know, but it's, uh, it's just, I don't know. Anyway, let me get out with this one here. And the Pharisee didn't want to admit that the uh, history tells us is true. Israel was in bondage to men on many occasions. They may have been in bondage in e to Egypt, in Babylon, and even when talking with Christ, were under the bondage of Rome. They knew and understood what bondage is. You know, when they would do bad things, God would punish them by using other people to take them and put them in exile. Sometimes there was one exile I remember was 600 years. 600 years in bondage, not knowing your homeland. How many generations would pass on in 600 years? You know, it's like taking the, taking the south here and moving them up to north there for 600 years. You guys would even forget what grits was. You know, you'd want, you'd want home fried potatoes, onions. You just, right, Richard? <laughs> I still have a little problem with grits. I don't know why I've been in, been in the south more than I've ever been in the north. But many people today are unwilling to admit that they're in bondage. Oh, I'm not in bondage. I'm free. I'm free as a bird. But there's a, a, re, a renaming of sin in our world. We've, we're trying to make it okay. All right? Because, listen, that little sin is no problem whatsoever. Everybody's doing it, so it must be right. And like my old dad used to say, son, if your friend jumped off a cliff, would you too? And I used to tell him, probably. <laughs> you know, probably. I'm that dumb, so I'd probably jump too. But we need to realize, folks, realize, think about it, picture it. 
what Jesus did for you, what he did for me. Think about that. How many in here have seen the, the Passion of the Christ? Passion of the Christ. Whoo, I tell you what, it took me three or four times to get through it. I couldn't watch it all the way through. When they started beating my Savior and making him all bloody and everything, I had to shut it off. I couldn't watch it. Because I realized then, it's not some very nice little thing. Oh yes, Jesus went to the cross and he died on the cross and he took him down when he was dead and he laid him in the grave and three days later he arose. But what he went through to get to that cross, what are the beatings that he took, all the abuse that he, this is God going through this for you. This isn't some stranger doing it for whatever. It's Jesus. For God so loved the whole world that he said his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him shall not perish but have life everlasting. Again, that's God's word. That's quote. I should have put it in quotes. Is that how they put quotes in? <laughs> yeah, I should have put it in quotes. Because that's so true. So true. Young folks, old folks, I don't care what age you are. <clears throat> you need to make that decision. You know, I, I made, when I got saved, I was think I was 28 years old, 27 or 28 years old. I felt so bad because I wasted all the years not knowing my Lord. It just made me... I said, I gotta do, I gotta work double time to make up for that time. Once you realize and can picture the price that was paid for your freedom, pay, paid for your salvation, to know one day you'll be in heaven. It's worth it all. It's worth it all. The truth breaks a death grip of sin in our lives, verse 31. That we're saved by grace alone, but on that we're saved, it gives us a desire to avoid sin and choose right. I remember before I was saved, I made some really dumb decisions. Because I was making them on my own. I didn't go to God, I didn't go to anybody, because I was, knew I was smart enough, I was big enough. My dad taught me to pull myself up on my own bootstraps. Be, be that John Wayne, you know. Uh, I, remember, I remember in hand, hand grenade training, uh, that we, they used to call them the old pineapple, the old checkered uh, hand, hand grenades. And uh, everybody else called them John Wayne lifesavers. Because he used to take, he'd run running up the hill of the Iwo Jima and pulling them things out by his teeth and throwing them hand grenades. Folks, I don't know if you ever played with hand grenades or not, but you just don't pull them <laughs> pins out <laughs> by your teeth. Or you're gonna leave your teeth somewhere. Because they just you almost have to have a pair of pliers and, to help crimp them so you can get them out. But that's not me anymore. I don't call these John Wayne lifesavers, but I have a lifesaver called Jesus Christ, who's in heaven watching over me right now. And he loves me. He prays for me. It says he's up at the right hand of God making an intercessory prayer for all his children. He loves us that much. He prays for us. And you know, it's not like somebody, you come up to him and say, hey brother, would you pray for me? I'll, I'll pray for you. And you walk on your way and you go, who was that guy? What did he want? Michael's got the right attitude. You want, want me to pray for you? Stop right where you are then. Let me get a hold of you. I'm going to pray for you right now. I'm going to pray for you right now. I want you to know that God loves us and he wants the best for his children. Just like the, your fathers on earth normally want the best for their children. Think how much better God wants for you. Wants for your family. Wants for your children. All right, number two, free from the father of sin. Oh, wow, the father of sin. And this, this is uh, found in, let me find it here, in uh, John, 8, 45, 44 and 45, and I got to tell you, Michael, these papers, if they get stuck, this, I didn't even glue them together, I really didn't. <laughs> John 40, uh, 8, 44 and 45, you are your father, you are your father, the devil, and the desires of your father, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth. Therefore, there is no truth in him. 
When he speaks a lie, he speaks it on his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. People are quicker to believe a lie than they are the truth. I'm telling you the truth right now. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're on your way to hell. And hell, I had a fellow one time who told me, he says, Pastor, he said, I'm going to hell with all my friends, and we're going to just party, party, party. And I said, well, I hope you can take the heat. And you got a lot to drink because you're going to be very thirsty. There's not a drop of water there. Nothing. You're just going to be, you ever been that thirsty? You ever been that your tongue just all sticks to the roof of your mouth? You're so dry. You just, you just start getting dizzy because you're dehydrated so bad. And you wonder, why would anybody want that for eternity? Why would anybody want to go to hell? Well, this young man, that's what his thoughts were. That was his dream. He's going to go. I did a funeral for a young man one day. He's home on leave from the army. He was married with three children. Him and his buddies were out partying. And they were in a little pickup truck. Of course, when you're big and tough, you don't wear seat belts because they get in your way. You know, everybody's told you how dangerous they are. When the truck rolled over, he was injected, and the truck rolled on him. I did his funeral. He wasn't a Christian, but he didn't have a pastor. The funeral called me and asked me if I'd do it for him. And I said, sure. So I, I met with the parents like I always do with the loved ones of the lost. And I said, they said, Pastor, how much is this going to cost me? And I could tell they, they couldn't afford anything. I said, I'll tell you what, if you let me preach what I want to preach, I'll do it free for your charge. No, nothing. Yes, sir. You sure can. Well, okay. So I remember standing up front and body was in the hand. And I said, let me ask all, all these young folks who are out there. I said, let me ask you one question to all you people sitting here this morning. If he could get up right now and tell you what it's like where he's at, would you believe him? Or would you think it's a lie too? Because he's not a Christian. And he's not in heaven. He's in hell. It's a hard thing to say because I always like to try to leave hope with people at a funeral. But there was no chance here. There was no chance. That young man's life was in it. The wife had to raise those three children. She might have got remarried. I don't know. I didn't follow along what happened. But all for a little party. All for a little party. The Pharisees were claiming God as their father, yet Jesus pointed out that their father was Satan. Satan. Wouldn't you like to have a dad like that? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't know God, you're following Satan. You have no choice. You have no choice. You don't know to do good. All you know is what your father has told you. Satan is not responsible for, well, for every temptation we face. Let's get that straight right now. Our sin, na sinful nature draws us to temptations. Because we're all sinners. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I know some people don't like to hear that. But that's what God's word says. That's what his word says. Yes, Satan is defeated, though, in the power of Christ, in the power of Jesus. You know, and Satan loses in the end, and the Christians win. If you don't believe me, read the book of Revelation. It's the back of the book. It'll tell you how it comes. It's going to turn out. Yes, Satan is very real, and he's still at work with his demons. Isn't that awful to think about that? But look at the world today. What's going on in it? Number three, though, is this one here. This one here. Free from the wages of sin. Romans 6, 23. 
You ought to take in your Bible and highlight that, or underline it, however you can mark it so you know it. Romans 6, 23, it says this, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let me read that again. For the wages of sin is death. That death is hell, that's what it'll be. And, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh boy, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to walk them streets of gold. I'm going to be singing and happy. And I'll be singing in tune with perfect pitch. They'll let me sing out loud then. Yeah, I won't have to just mouth it, try to mouth it. You know, Michael kind of shuts my mic off, I think, when I'm singing. I don't know why, but I try. I make that joyful noise. I'm the one that you know does that. Everybody else thinks beautiful. I, say, I make the joyful noise. Somebody's got to do it. That's what God said to do, right, Michael? Mm -hmm. Make a joyful noise. But payment is sure to be made for every individual. Every individual. You can pay the debt by spending in the in an eternity in hell. Otherwise, that debt is never paid for. Eternity in hell. And you can accept God's free gift. That gift is Jesus and it paid your debt for you. You must receive the gift. You get a, you get a stop out here on 231. Speed. I know none of you do that, because I can tell just watching how nice the cars go by. You know, going go both ways. You're just so orderly and everything, and not, not speeding. But you get stopped. Just one time you got stopped. And you got to go to court because you're going kind of fast. But you get into court, old Satan gets up and says, Judge, I wanted you to know, Michael was doing 200 miles an hour on 231. He was just ripping through, and that was right through fountain. I bet he couldn't even read the road signs. He was going so fast. Right through fountain. But, but the policeman got him, and now I think we need to just punish him to the full extent of the law. Trust me, Daniel would have punished me enough already. Then, you stand, then his attorney stands up. His attorney just happens to be Jesus. And he says, Your Honor, can I speak to you a minute? So he goes up to the bench and he says, Father, I've already paid that bill. It's all taken care of. Michael's a free man. Let him go home. Let him go home. And that's the way it is with us as children. And that's what we're going to be offering you here in a minute to know Jesus as your Savior, to know Him, that one day you'll be with Him in glory. Follow me, please. Father God, I, I just can't thank you <clears throat> enough, Father. I know today we celebrate the freedom of a country, Lord, and the freedom of this nation, God. But Lord, we also need to remember the freedom that Jesus Christ bought for us, paid for us with His own blood, Father. Because your word says, well, the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Lord, thank you for Jesus and his willingness to go to that cross. Oh, Lord, thank you. All the punishment and the horror that he went through. But God, he did it, and he did it for us. Thank you, Lord. And Father, if there be someone here this morning that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, I pray, Father, this would be the hour, this would be the time that they would come forward and will show them in the Bible what it means to be saved, God. And Father, maybe there's somebody here that you sent here to come and join this church and help out in this congregation. I pray, Father, that they would come down front and we would take care of all the paperwork for them and get, to, get their transferred in here. God, maybe there's someone here that just needs prayer. Father, maybe if they just come down front, we'll pray for them. Lord, thank you for being here amongst us. Thank you for loving us so much that you care to come and listen. Father, praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you were able, will you please stand for the invitation? <coughs>